Some of my favorite enhancements within Creo Parametric are around the user experience that we have uh, changed in the product. One of the first things you notice when you fire up Creo Parametric is the new user interface. We've implemented the Microsoft Fluent based UI. This allows you uh, much easier to access the commands. We've grouped certain commands for you. We've added a command finder for you so that you can easily locate the commands in the ribbon. This allows you to much easier uh, work with your model, uh, define the geometry you want to do, uh, and streamlines the design process for you. In addition to that, we've made some uh, key improvements in Sketcher capability. Uh, now you can directly access Sketcher um, simply by selecting a face. By doing that, it will automatically sketch on that actual plane that you select. Inside Sketcher, I can also now keep my workflow going. If I need to add extra references, I don't have to uh, stop sketching and enter and add references. I can simply hold the Alt key while I am sketching. It will pause the sketching process for me and allow me to pick extra references to add. In addition, we've also added new uh, geometry commands inside Sketcher, such as the ability to create a center rectangle or a slanted rectangle. We've also enhanced uh, the ability to automatically regenerate the model, or dynamically regenerate the model. Now I can simply click on a feature, and when I do that, it will show me the dimensions for that particular feature. Each of those dimensions will have drag handles on them. I can directly click on those drag handles and move them, and it will modify just that particular dimension of the section. And in real time, uh, update the rest of my surrounding geometry for me. We've also added, added taper capability to the extrude command. So now, as I'm extruding some geometry, I can, at the same time, add a draft angle to it. This reduces the need to create a separate draft feature and speeds up the design process for you. In the sheet metal environment, we've also done a significant amount of work, again, on the user interface. Pretty much all the commands are now dashboard-based commands. Again, this gives you direct manipulation capability, drag handles on the screen, so that you can interact in real time with your geometry on the screen. Uh, commands such as corner reliefs have been unified across all the sheet metal features. So now, whichever sheet metal feature you're in, the ability to apply a corner relief will be the same. You can apply a corner relief whether it be in the formed or the flat state. In addition to that, we've also added some new commands to sheet metal, such as the ability to create a sketched form feature. Previously, you would have had to have uh, created a separate model to use as your sketch form. Then you would have to assemble that in, and that would build your form feature. Now I can simply sketch the geometry I want, define the draft angle I want, define whether I want to put any bend reliefs on it or not. In addition to that, we've also added in there the ability to create a partial piercing. Another command we added to Sheet Metal is the ability to uh, join uh, disconnected walls. So now if I've built two separate walls, I have the ability to say join these together. It will uh, allow me the ability or offer me the ability to be able to add a bend between those, as well as give me controls as to which side of those walls I want to keep or remove. Again, from a usability standpoint in Sheet Metal, we've added a 2D flat state preview. So that's a little separate window that will come up in the corner of your Creo Parametric uh, view screen that will give you a permanent representation of what the flat state is. Within that window, it will also tell you dynamically whether you've got any overlapping geometry in the flattened state. That will give you an upfront uh, idea of whether or not this part can actually be manufactured. On a surfacing side, we've also introduced a new command in the form of freestyle. Freestyle is based upon subdivisional surface modeling. This allows you to start with a primitive shape. The primitive shape has a control mesh around it. You can subdivide that control mesh up to add more details. Then you simply push and pull on that, that control mesh and that builds high quality curvature continuous surfaces for you. Those surfaces or quilts that, that result from that freestyle feature <coughs> can then be taken for further downstream use. You can trim them, you can merge them, you can add rounds to them, etc., just as if they were any other quilt or surface created inside Creo Parametric. This allows you to very rapidly build freeform surface geometry. 
On an assembly side, we've also done some significant improvements with the introduction of lightweight graphics. This allows you to very quickly load an entire assembly by loading in just the Creo View viewable information. This comes onto the screen instantly, allowing me then to dial down into the model or dial down into further levels of detail for each component. Or maybe I just want to load the entire assembly up to then select a number of components to say I, I don't want to use them. I want to create a new rep and ignore these particular components. It allows me to get to my geometry on the screen much, much faster. Continuing with assemblies, we've also uh, enhanced the way we assign constraints or we constrain certain components when we're placing them. We now have introduced a 3D dragger for placement. So as I bring my component in, I can very quickly and easily drag it around in 3D space to get it to the correct location. Then constraints are now more intuitive and easier to assign. Further to this, we've also added the ability to open up a subset. When I do this, I can open an entire assembly as a subset, and before I load the entire data into the system, I can then choose the components that I want. I have the ability to filter that list or search within that list. I have the ability to say I want to ignore all components below a certain size, for example, or only pull in the components within this specific bounding box. Another exciting area that we added into uh, Creo Parametric is the introduction of flexible modeling. Flexible modeling is a set of features that allow you to do direct manipulation or direct modeling type operations within a parametric environment. I can select faces, select bosses, uh, select round geometry, and edit those, irrespective of where that data has come from, whether it's come from a parametric feature-based model or whether it's an imported file, a step or an IGES file. I can then directly edit that, and the surrounding geometry will adjust accordingly for me. These changes that I am making are stored as parametric features, so there's no loss of any previous design intent that I had in my model. This allows you to do late stage design changes, for example, where it's the end of the day and I need to make a quick change to something, but I don't want to have to, or I don't know necessarily how that model was built up. Or maybe there's poor design intent in it and I can't actually achieve the change that I want to make quickly. Flex modeling allows you to, to make those changes quickly. I strongly recommend that you take a further look and a more in-depth look at some of the other capabilities that we have to offer and make Creo Parametric your choice for this year. For further information on Creo Parametric and other Creo products, please visit ptc.com.